Hi everybody, it's one o'clock and we are at Wild Care. Today we have a very, very special visitor. This is Trill, the Western Screech Owl. Melissa, you want to tell us about her? Yeah, so Trill uh, came to us in 2014 and her injury is that we believe uh, she fell from a tree. So they found her by the base of a tree, uh, took her in, found out she had scarring on her eye and also some brain trauma. So that makes her non-releasable. Uh, the oldest pair of Western Screech Owls in the wild, I believe, was 13. So, but typically... 13 years old? Okay, and she yep. came in in 2014? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, so typically, six, six yeah. years? Yeah, six there year. we go. Let yeah. me do some math here, yeah. And uh, usually these guys don't live that long in the wild, so that was the oldest recorded one. Um, you know, with us, we can double or triple their lifespans uh, for three reasons. When an animal is um, at an organization like ours is one, we feed them every day. That doesn't happen in the wild. That makes sense. Yeah, if you're um, hunting, if you have to hunt for your food, you're not going to be catching something every single day. Mm-hmm. Uh, their food is not poisoned. Yeah, good point. Yep. Western screech owls are very prone to the problems of rodenticide poisoning. Using rat poison poisons the very animals that eat rodents. Yep, carry on. Um, and they uh, have no predators because obviously this uh, little owl here would be a, a great meal for a larger raptor. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Oh, interesting. Mm-hmm. Another owl specifically or a hawk? A hawk, owl, pretty much any larger size predator. If she was on the ground, you could do coyote, raccoons. Sure. Uh, and, of course, then she also has great medical care here at Wild Care. Yes. Um, all of our animals are fortunate to have literally an ER steps away from them. So in the wild, uh, the op- option for wild animals is when they get injured or sick is hope somebody finds them. Um, they'll, or they can try to um, get underneath some cover and try to make it for a while till they fe- till they heal. Right. Or they'll just pass away. So mm. um, we can double or triple their lifespans because of that. So in captivity, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that makes sense. So we think she fell out of a tree and has some maybe some brain damage. Mm-hmm. We know she can't see very well. Mm-hmm. Yep, absolutely. Oh, did you? I love when the eyes did dilate you see the like eye? that. Yeah, that was very cool. Did everybody see that when her when her right eye did a big dilation? We, uh, you see that with the baby owls too. They do a lot of blinking. Their eyes dilate at different speeds. It's really really funny. Yeah. They're just amazing. If you're just joining us, we are today in the courtyard of Wild Care with one of our wildlife ambassadors. I know we have some new viewers today. Our wildlife ambassadors, of course, are former wildlife hospital patients that for one reason or another would not be able to survive in the wild on their own. So we've done extensive testing and these animals have shown that they are able to be in captivity and they serve as educational animals and as ambassadors for their species. Yes. You yeah. want to tell us a little bit about Western sure, Screech Owls? Sure, sure, cool. absolutely. So there's Western uh, Screech Owls and there's Eastern. Oh, of course, she she's was making Western. her noise. Yes. So um, the good noise is a great thing is we have about six raptors here that are very, very vocal um, because it is spring. So yeah. it, is, it is mating season. I so you guys can hear. It's time to find a mate and settle down and raise a little family of owlets because that's what baby owls are called. They're called owlets. Oh, sure. Now, western screech owls will nest in um, tree cavities. They don't make their own nests. And they'll lay anywhere, for, or the female will lay anywhere from two to seven eggs. Wow. Which is a seven lot. Seven eggs out of a body that small? How yes. How big are the eggs? Yes. The eggs are actually quite large. They're about that big. Wow. Uh-huh. That's amazing. Trill. I know. I know. It's uh, amazing because if you think about it, it's usually like the little ones that actually have more eggs huh. than the larger ones. Really? Like the bald eagles will have like two. Interesting. Yeah. I wonder yeah. why that is. Um, I don't I don't know if it has to do because they're little and maybe um, prey species prey species right like your ducks have lots of ducklings because they know right. some of them aren't going to make it yep that yeah. makes sense yep and like your barn owls can have up to 16 can they eggs? have that many yes. wow and they can do that twice a year wow that's um, amazing and the neat thing about uh, barn owls and I'm suspecting other species as well is they will have as many eggs comparative to the mouse population so they are your own natural um, way of controlling rodent populations sure. so they breed more in accordance to a, a spike in the rodent population definitely so. if you're looking for more information on 
barn owls as a source of rodent control, mm-hmm. visit uh, the Hungry Owl Project web- website, hungryowls.org. That's a program of wild care that uh, helps you build owl boxes mm-hmm. to attract natural predators. We also have the option to buy screech owl boxes. Mm-hmm. Uh, a little challenging right now, but uh, with the shelter in place and everything, but uh, screech owl boxes to attract these very handsome little friends yes, to your yard. Yes, yes, these little fierce, fierce owls. She is fierce. She is very fierce. She is nocturnal, okay. uh, meaning she hunts at night. Not all owls all are nocturnal, though. Um, the snowy owl that you would see in Harry Potter, that's a diurnal or daytime mm-hmm. owl, as well as burrowing owls, which we have here as well, and those are pretty much similar in size but a little bit longer legs there mm, oh yeah they're pretty funny yeah uh, and those are diurnal but she is nocturnal now what she would eat in the wild of course rodents insects and vertebrates crayfish oh really about crayfish they'll go yeah. into into a watery area i assume yeah. they can't go very deep obviously no no but they can uh, i was just reading that they can perch on um, a branch above it and then just wait for the crayfish and jump out and grab them <laughs> Yeah. Good for you, Trill. That's so funny. Now, she has, of course, all the three factors that make her into the raptor category, which is the powerful eyesight. Right, which she's using to look at the bricks right yeah, now. I'll give you a view from below uh, here. Something's interesting down there. Who knows what? Yeah. Uh, and her eyes are yellow, whereas when we were uh, looking at Sequoia, brown eyes, they can have brown, yellow. Um, and some owl species, there's about over 250 owl species in the world. Oh, I didn't know that. That's yeah, cool. Yeah, and uh, they can have brown eyes, they can have uh, red eyes, orange eyes, but she happens to have yellow eyes there with her little powerful eyesight. Um, of course, a little hook beak, tiny little yep. thing right there. Thank you, Robert, for your donation. We appreciate it Aww, so much. Oh, thanks, Robert. And then, of course, her powerful but tiny talons. Oh, oh, she's, she's making her little yeah. call. Yes, the talons, and they're so funny. And look at her little fluffy, feathery feet. I, yeah. I just find the feet of the owls to be amazing. But she does have those incredible talons, and I see you're wearing a very heavy glove. Yes, because um, if we didn't have this protection, they can actually go all the way through our glove. Oh, um, that's not good. Raptors are equipped with a ratcheting system. So every time they grab onto a prey and that prey twitches, mm-hmm. they ratchet down more, and they ratchet down more, and they ratchet down more. So uh-huh. if you do not have a glove, obviously when those talons go into you, you're going you're gonna, to um, twitch. And when you twitch, they're just going to squeeze harder and harder and harder. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That must be really challenging to get yeah. those talons <laughs> yeah. loose again because I'm sure the ratcheting also means that the, 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 the grip becomes more and more firm, right? It, it does. It does. And then you just got to talk your uh, way through it and just go, okay, I have to relax now. And once you start relaxing then you can start to disengage there um, so she has two talons in the front and two in the back this little uh, talon right here or this toe right here is a reversible toe meaning it can go forward and backward and all the way around oh and the reason like it, an opposable thumb like an opposable thumb and the reason that we can't do that is because of this little skin right here okay they don't have that so they can go forward and back and all the way around ah. and it makes a greater surface to grab the mice so i always tell the kids if you do bunny ears you do pinchers, you put them together, it's the best mouse trap ever right there. Uh, okay, sure. And although, now, is that something that many owls have, or is that yeah. more specific to Western? Nope, all, owls. Okay. all owls have that. Um, and a lot of people think that... I learn that, something every time we do one of these. Know, it's, it's so great. cool. It's great, it's um, great. They think that her, you know, it looks like she has really, really tiny or really short legs, but truly her legs go all the way up into her wing pit there. Oh, okay, sure. So, so there's video there where people like lift up an owl, and you, they have very, very long hit. Uh, long legs. Yeah, it's funny. The burrowing owls, you can see that. They yeah. stand that way that I feel like all the other owls are going to sit yeah, yeah. more more hunched like this. And she has great camouflage. Of course, yes. that camouflage is keeping her safe during the day when she's taking a nap mm-hmm. from other predators. Does she just nap in a tree or does yep. she go and find a cavity to sleep in? Um, she can nap in a tree. She can nap in a cavity. Uh, what's interesting, though, it, what I, goes into the whole camouflage is that if she turns around. She is sure interested in they something turn. behind us, yes. Yeah. Um, the little feathers right here, those are called ear tufts. Uh huh. And um, they're not actually ears, they're just feathers. Right. But what they do is when they um, erect those ear tufts there, it actually breaks up the silhouette of the owl, so it goes oh. into more camouflage. So, like sure. that. Sure. And it's interesting because the great horned owl has that also, uh-huh. obviously. That's why he's called the great horned owl. They're neither ears nor yeah. horns, of course, but they are. Uh, those feather tests, that's funny. So that would break up the silhouette and uh-huh. make it less obvious that there is a there is an owl sitting there. And her ears are not like ours. Uh, she has one ear up high and one ear down low. Mm-hmm. One Why up, is that? Uh, the one up top will tell the owl if the mouse is up high or down low. 
one off to the left there is going to tell the owl if it, that mouse is left or right. So when they put it together or they match it up with triangulation, ah. they can tell exactly where that mouse is coming from. And there's some owls... With their hearing. With that their is hearing. That is just incredible, yep. And there's some owls, like the long-eared owl, that can get a mouse in complete darkness mm, mm -hmm. just by hearing. And actually, the placement of where the ears are, the more asymmetrical are, the better the hearing of the owl. That makes sense because that would give them more disparity between them and give them a better mm -hmm. better range, exactly. Um, the barn owl, in fact, has is supposed to have the best hearing of any land animal on the planet. Mm. So they can hear a heartbeat of a mouse at about 100 feet away and under two feet of snow. Wow. So I always wonder too, is like, how can they hear our heartbeats? Or like, what do our heartbeats sound Yeah, what do sound? we sound like that? And then what does the noise of, of the yeah. modern world sound like to them? That's a, that's a really interesting question. You don't think about that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. See, with a lot of our um, hawks and our falcons, and they're visual hunters. So yeah. it's always a really quick movement that's going to um, stimulate them. Right. But for owls, they're really sensitive to sound. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you got to be careful about loud noises and, and uh, in their environment and everything. Startling truly, them, sure. Truly, truly um, sensitive to that. I hope you hear everybody can making yes. that little call. So, what is that. that? It is a mating call. Oh, okay. okay. Many nesting call. Um, she could be calling a boy in or saying, "Hey, you know, come hang out with me." Hey, boys, I'm available, and hey I have really boys. cute ear tufts. <laughs> I have a Twitter account. I have a Twitter account. Uh huh. <laughs> uh huh. Um, Yes, but she makes that. It's spring has sprung here. So even though we have everything going on in the the uh, world in our human world, right? Um, it everything's just normal for them. So it, life still continues for them. Yep, so, that's true. Uh, their instinct is to make these noises, or um, in in our case of a red tail, you know, to rip out her feathers to create a brood patch. Everybody mm -hmm. has a little. Every animal here is very unique. Um, not in just personalities, but in what um, their complex behaviors. And so right. we try to adapt to that as best we can. They actually adapt better to us than we do to them. Mm -hmm. Very true. Oh, she's just such a beautiful, beautiful little owl. I'm very much hoping that, uh, well, I'm sure it will happen very soon. We will start getting raptor babies into the wildlife <sighs> hospital. And when we get the baby screech owls, we will absolutely do a live stream with them. They are some of the most amazing, fascinating, charismatic, wonderful little animals. And tiny little things too. And tiny little things and so fluffy and the little necks going around in circles. They're just so funny. So everybody keep an eye on Wild Care's live stream feed. Again, so we, we do these every weekday at one o'clock Pacific Standard Time. Um, I haven't been doing them on the weekends, but uh, we do them every week weekday. And we focus on either an animal in the wildlife hospital or an animal that is one of our educational animals. We know that so many visitors look forward to coming to wild care on a daily or weekly or monthly basis to see our educational animals. And with the shelter in place, you can't be here. So we thought we'd bring our animals to you. Thank you for watching, everybody. Thank you for supporting wild care. Visit us online at discoverwildcare.org. And we will see you tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Come on, Trail, give us one good look before we leave. Here we go. Beautiful girl. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Animal everybody. Yes. Bye. Bye.